In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use Microthema in combination with Elementor. The two programs can now be used at the same time from a single browser tab. We just need to enable Elementor inside Microthema by flipping the Elementor switch. Uh, to put the two programs into context, Elementor is a page builder for building layouts with drag and drop, while Microthema is a CSS editor geared towards maximum design control. Microthema gives Elementor users additional styling options, more freedom when designing responsively, and more granular control over which elements can be styled. Elementor is great for creating column-based layouts, which we simply drag and drop content into, like a testimonial for instance. We can then customize Elementor's placeholder content however we like. The option to duplicate modules is a nice time saver too. Elementor has styling options of its own, which cater well for many use cases. But on occasion, we might want to make a style change that isn't supported out of the box. For instance, we can align the testimonial content with Elementor, but there's no option for aligning the main text separately from the content below. We can make these kinds of granular changes with Microthema, however. The general workflow with Microthema involves two steps. The first step is to target something on the page that we want to customize. The second step is to apply new styles via the toolbar. For example, we begin by clicking the target button to enter targeting mode. Then we click on something to select it, such as the testimonial text. Finally, we click the create selector button. With our selector in place, we can customize the appearance of the testimonial text using the full set of Microthema's 100 plus styling options. This is where Microthema differs a bit from Elementor, which presents a curated set of styling options depending on the type of module. So to align our text to the left, we can go to the text property group and set the text align property to left. We can then reduce the font size a bit by the font property group. This font change draws our attention to another use case for Microthema, which is styling multiple Elementor modules in one go. We can modify our selector so that it targets the main text in both testimonials. To change the targeting of an existing selector, we click the name of the selector in the top toolbar and then click the retarget selector icon. We select the testimonial text as we did before, but this time we'll choose an alternative targeting suggestion. Let's expand Microthema's advanced targeting options so we can see what's going on under the hood. If we choose the second targeting suggestion, the highlighting changes to show that this selector targets both testimonials. Number two on the right confirms that the selector targets exactly two elements on the page. It's good to have these advanced options expanded, even if you don't fully understand the CSS code shown on the right pane or the HTML code shown in the left pane, because you will learn a lot just by playing around with these options. To update our selector, we just click the update selector button. Now our text alignment and font size changes apply to both testimonials. And if we want to make further refinements, we will see the changes apply to both at the same time. Another area you might want to have more granular control over is with animation. Elementor lets us animate an entire module block, but with Microthema we can animate the individual components of a module. So if we wanted to draw attention to the author of the testimonials, we can animate the profile image and the text to the right independently. First, we create a selector that targets the profile image in both testimonials. To do this, we click on one image and then choose the option to target both images. We can now create our selector and set some animation properties via the animation property group. Let's go with slide in left with a one second duration and trigger the animation when the user scrolls a testimonial into view. To target the element that wraps both the name and the job title, we find a container element for the text and then choose the option of targeting both columns. To create a nice effect where the text and the image meet in the middle, we're going to set slide in right with the same one second duration and the in view event. Now the author bio gets animated whenever the testimonials scroll into view. 
If we just wanted this to happen once, when the testimonials first become visible, we could change the event to in view once on both selectors. Microthema's responsive features sync up nicely with Elementor's. When Microthema is first installed, it will use the two breakpoints to find in the Elementor dashboard settings, if it finds Elementor is active. That's the two tabs here to the right of the All Devices tab. Their max width values correspond to the breakpoints to find in Elementor. These Elemental tabs can be manually added too via Microthema's media query options, which is useful if Microthema was installed before Elemental. Elemental's preview width for tablet and mobile is normally fixed. It's always 360 pixels wide for mobile, and for tablet, it's always one pixel wider than the mobile breakpoint. By default, the mobile breakpoint takes effect at the 767 pixel mark, so the tablet preview width is set to 768 pixels. When you use Microthema and Elementor together, however, you gain some flexibility with regards to the mobile and tablet previews. You can adjust them however you like by sliding the top ruler left or right. This reveals how Elemental's responsive styles work on a range of screen sizes, rather than just at two fixed points. And this matters because mobile devices come in all sorts of sizes, as you will see if you hover over Mike Thema's popular device previews. The dark shading on the top ruler reveals the scope of media queries. It's clear that the mobile breakpoint applies to screen sizes wider than 360 pixels. And on occasion, we might want to override Elemental's default responsive behavior for this higher range. Let's run through a quick example. We'll start by adding two columns and then populating them with the Elemental counter module. If we drag the preview slider down, we can see that Elementor automatically switches to a single column layout when the mobile breakpoint kicks in at the 767 pixel mark. This is great under most circumstances, but because we've chosen to add some fairly narrow content to our columns, we've got quite a lot of white space on either side. It might look better if the single column layout only kicked in for this particular module on screen sizes up to 420 pixels wide. We can do this with Microthema by adding a new custom breakpoint. First we click the Edit Media Queries icon, then we give our new media query a label, and finally we add the media query code, which I'm just going to copy and paste from another media query, and then change the max width number to 420. We then just need to save the media query, which will reload the interface with our new custom tab on the right hand side. We can now change the behavior of the columns. To start, we need to create a selector that will target the two columns. Elemental columns are not directly clickable because inner elements are tightly nested inside with no white space separating them from the outer column element. A trick to targeting columns then is to click one of these inner elements and then check for div.elementalRow in the breadcrumbs. The item directly to the right of this is always the outermost column element. We then just need to choose the suggestion that targets both columns. Microthema's default label isn't very meaningful in this instance, so let's make it more descriptive. Now we simply override Elemental's single column behavior by setting the width to 50% via the Elemental Mobile tab. We then override this again for smaller screens by setting the width to 100% on our Max 420 tab. Now if we drag the site preview down, we can see that the two column layout holds at the 767 pixel mark and only switches to a single column layout at the 420 pixel mark. If you're a coder, you might like to use these responsive features, but still write your own CSS styles freehand. 
you can do this via the custom code pane on the left. Or you may prefer to write raw CSS or SAS code using the full code editor. You can enable support for SAS via Microthema's preferences. The full code editor also integrates with Microthema's targeting mode for quickly generating selectors. If you're wondering how Microthema works, it's quite simple. Microthema writes its styles to a single style sheet, which we can preview here. Or visit directly in our browser to see where it's located. These CSS styles override the styles added by our theme or elemental just by being present. Microthema doesn't actually modify or delete any files in our theme or page builder. It's a completely non-destructive process so we can safely update themes and plugins without losing Microthema customizations. Before finishing this tutorial, I'd like to leave you with a few general pointers to help you get the best start with Microthema. We'll cover the things that beginners often miss. Microthema supports site-wide styles that apply to multiple pages, as well as page-specific styles. Selectors are site-wide by default, meaning that if we target the site title, for instance, our styles will apply to the site title on every page of the site. This is usually what we want when we're styling headers, footers and sidebars. However, when we're styling page specific content, it's good practice to ensure that our selectors don't apply to more elements than we intend. To do this, we can enable the page ID CSS modifier. This will prefix our selectors with a page specific class guaranteeing that our selector will only affect the current page. On the subject of good practice, let's take a quick look at how to keep our Microthema selectors organized and manageable. All of the selectors we create are accessible from the selectors menu in the top left. They will be added to the general folder by default, but it's strongly advised that you drag and drop selectors into more descriptive folders, which you can create yourself. The order of selectors in the style sheet corresponds to the order of the folders in the selectors menu, by the way. It's also a very good idea to give selectors descriptive labels that mean something to us. The default label that Microthema generates will be hit and miss, especially when working with page builders. You can set your own label either at the point of creating a selector in targeting mode or via the selectors menu once you finish styling a particular section. The selector highlight icon will be useful in the latter case, but bear in mind that this will only highlight elements if the selector applies to the current page. Finally, and this is an important one, don't create multiple selectors for exactly the same element or set of elements. Looking out for the blue numbers in targeting mode will help us avoid this. Notice that the testimonial text has the number one in the top left corner with a blue background. This tells us that we've already created one selector that targets the element. If we hover over the number, we can see an option to navigate to our existing testimonial selector. This provides a convenient way to visually navigate between our selectors, as well as preventing us from creating surplus selectors that target the same elements and may can cause confusion. When we've finished making style changes, we have the option to completely uninstall Microthema without losing our work. We just need to copy and paste this inactive code anywhere into our themes functions.php file. This will ensure that Microthema's style edits still apply to our site. It's a useful feature if we want to reduce the number of plugins installed or prevent clients from making design alterations. And if we ever need to reactivate Microthema, all of our settings will be there in the interface just as we left them. To summarize, Elemental does a fantastic job of streamlining site building and shielding users from various technical considerations. But should you wish to go beyond Elemental styling options, Microthema provides the level of design control that's usually only available to programmers. It actively exposes the technical workings of your site so you can make granular adjustments. This functionality is delivered via a graphical interface that sits on top of Elemental. So site builders can now have the best of both worlds quick and easy site building with extra design control as and when they need it. I hope you found this brief demonstration useful. 
If you want to learn more or have any questions, please head over to themeover.com. Thanks for watching.